sorry. Okay, um, now it's the uh, second uh, session of this uh, workshop with the May. Um, the subject matter is the bamboo. As you can, you can see here, this is an old demo I did in my uh, class back in Seattle when I taught at uh, experimental college. And uh, uh, I had a handout similar to this in my lesson three. If you go online, you'll find that original handout. But I think this one did better, so I'm, I'm going to show you best. Uh, instead of using the handout, I use a picture of the, out of this uh, original. Um, so let's uh, just put that on the maybe against the wall somewhere so you can see anywhere. Uh, Oh, can you reach that? It's a little bit far. Well, just on top of that uh, paper roll would be fine. Just on top of the paper roll is fine, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, perfect. Okay. Unless it's stable. Okay, good. Actually, no clear. All right. So, <coughs> I got a piece of... Um, I'm not sure what this paper is. So, uh, the best way to tell is you, you can use your... Uh, moisture from your mouth, or just use a drop of water and put on the tip of the. So you can you see what paper is this? It's at uh, least raw, raw or uh, semi or uh, raw, right? It 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 expands, bleed. So um, by just doing that, you can tell if the paper is uh, sized or unsized. So this is unsized, but uh, from touching, I feel it's a semi size. That's perfect. Um, I use the the smooth side. Do you have a piece of paper from your own, or you want to? I can give you. I'm not sure if I have semi size, okay. but we, we can certainly find it. Uh, this is oh here, I got some. Let me show you the semi size. So this one is what. Yeah, it has a cut, but uh, you you can you can use it for practice. It's the same size. Yeah. This is the, the front side. Yeah. Do you have paper weight? You can wait till this is how we do it. We don't flat. We don't uh, flat the paper. We just use paper weight. Um, if you don't have, a, you can borrow from Victoria maybe. Um, or you can just use any box or yeah. you know, tools. Or, or just the box of the, yeah, that will have the ink, I mean the, the, the seal here. Yeah. So. <clears throat> and this is the, the composition reference. I am, I'm looking at the original in front of me also. Uh, so usually we start from the, uh, the, 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 step, the stalk of the bamboo. And the brush I'm using, uh, you can use a stiff brush, um, a wolf hair brush. Um, the calligraphy you just use should be fine. And you can also use a combination brush like that. Yeah, it's probably a little small because you want to. This? You, yeah, the, the larger you see what you have. I, I won't use this one. Is maybe. this okay? This one should be fine. It's a little bit on the soft side, but if you just go try, and then I can let you try this one also later to compare. So this is a go-to brush. <laughs> you know, you can do everything with that. Um, uh, it's a bamboo and uh, orchid brush, I name it. Um, uh, it's probably a mixture of uh, uh, soft and stiff, all kind of brush. It's made by uh, the master. Uh, Xu Lao Shan. Um, so you soak the brush in water first, whatever you're using, soak it first. Let me get some paper towel here. Ah, uh, yeah. We you have, have it? Okay, yeah. Oh, here we have. And uh, squeeze out the extra water and then uh, dry the, the brush a little bit so it's not dripping. But you need some water to, to blend uh, color, right? If we use any um, Green, we can use the mineral green, that's what I used on the trunk. 
the middle green also add some body, some uh, some uh, texture body. We call it you know to the to the ink when you dilute it. And you can also add something like the, the peach sap if you want to control bleeding. But this is semi size. I guess I, we don't need that. So I diluted the the ink. Uh, I mean the the green. Okay, just like that. And uh, um, it's uh, hard to describe, but I will make it the opaque color, at least uh, semi-transparent or, or translucent. It's probably like a milk, yeah. So you can see through. And then um, to paint the the trunk, the the stalk, there's one side is darker, right? So we just touch a little bit ink without blending. Without blending, so just like that. Uh, without blending too much, but you do need to blend a little bit, so it's not going to show like a stripe. So this is not actually a good example here. It has a bad example. <laughs> I could have added that dark. I'm not sure, but uh, if you did, do not blend, you will get the a dark stripe, right? So that's not uh, not good. Sometimes. Uh, I do this, I just touch dark ink. And then right before I touch the paper, I, I um, skim, you know, just touch, barely touch the water. So it would soften the edge, the stroke, okay. So I start from outside the frame. So actually starting on the felt here and uh, just like that. It's kind of too blue, huh? So I should have muted it a little bit. So, so when things happen like that, just leave it alone. You cannot add any color to that. And the next one, we'll try to, to be, to make it right. So, and then I'll, I'll, I'll overwrite on that when it's dry. So, um, the first stuff is outside Right, so now we have first knot. And then we start again. Um, actually, if I don't reload, I suppose to go all the way. So basically it's a diagonal line like that, but you, you have a little bit of curve. So that's a little bit. Too blue, <laughs> but uh, this is Japanese uh, color is much stronger than the Chinese mm -hmm. uh, counterpart. So we we'll just mute it again, um, and uh, the second one is narrower, and notice the variation of uh, the level. You know the the joints is different, so they don't stop at the same level. It's also diagonal, right? A little bit straighter. And the key is to pull the brush, the brush lean to the, to the direction you move instead of pushing it. A lot of people, uh, what students would do is they don't move the hand or the arm. So they start like this, right? And then they start pushing like that. So that's wrong. So you have to move your hand. So the best position is standing. And this one, um, compared to that, has a problem. You see, it's almost parallel, but still a little bit different. That's enough. Um, I can enhance that by making a crossing to break that parallel. Okay, so you can add yet another small branch, but could be a little bit darker or lighter. In this case, I want to make it like dark, darker, maybe. You can start the branch um, on this trunk. Where I started on is on that one. So that breaks this direction. We can, um, either way, we can do this or that. I think for this one, we just vary a little bit from the original. So we just do something like that. You can make a crossing. Um, and then you don't have to do like the manger 
a major chunk, you, you stop frequently that much. You can just do the pause. You know, we don't have to leave a gap like that. Uh, and then, just like you do three uh, tricks, there are four strokes usually. The key is to avoid the fork. So you don't, you don't end all the strokes. Although the bamboo might grow like that, you know, but it's not, not nicer to avoid making three lines across from the same point. So I, I would make a crossing instead, or you can just avoid. That's okay. So you don't, as long as you don't make the chicken feet. Okay. You, you know what I'm talking about? Um, a Y, you know, that kind of uh, shape. Uh, or X, where you have three lines crossing. So that, that, that's a universal uh, principle when you paint any lines. So they don't really end, you know, end starting at the same point, right? And then, uh, actually, we can do the branches afterwards. That's what I did, I think, on the other one. So, um, let's just do the leaves, okay? So we reload the brush. This time with a little more ink, less color. What, whatever remaining there is fine. And then we use pure ink to start with. Usually the darkest is uh, the, the focal point. In this case, maybe this group. And then we don't, if we don't reload, it will gradually become lighter and lighter. Again, I touched the water a little bit, just to soft, soften the... So this is a little bit stiff, actually. Um, before I do the individual leaves, I pay more attention where the, the location and the, uh, the shape of the whole plaster or block look like. It's a triangle or something like you know, the, the envelope shape. Okay, so we start from the left, and then just like that. It's too dry. No, water is not enough. Oops, not used to. It. This is raw paper. I realize this is completely unsized. See the how smearing that is. So, but don't worry. We consider that as a rainy bamboo, maybe something with the dew in the morning. Um, you have to adapt to the speed, you know, to the increase the speed to avoid for the problem, and uh, just do another group. So this this paper is really smearing. I was wrong. I thought it was semi size, but as the the moment you touch the paper, you will feel the the you know the absorbency, and then you adjust with the speed, and. Uh, um, yeah, the speed, also the, the, the moisture, if you, you, you want to adjust, if needed. But basically, we still keep going, right? And uh, the group outside the frame here, so the basic group is three, but we can add to that afterwards. You can make it to four or five. Usually the odd numbers, right? Four is not very easy to. But there are four, like, like a, here. If you have four, the three is, is a more uh, fully developed, and then one just a, uh, a thin one. And you can make it five if you want. Okay, then um, I no longer add ink from now on, I just add water to make it lighter. So let's just develop this one. See, that's what I'm supposed to have. But I don't really uh, control the, the light, how light it will be. It just, um, a gradation, so to speak, so it will be from dark to light. 
And if I just keep adding a little bit of water each time when I need to reload, it will become lighter and lighter. Okay. And one, two. The, in Chinese painting, the light leaves uh, usually recede uh, behind the, the dark. Okay. So just add. See, that's in the back. And, uh, so I don't really care about the shape of the individual leaves. A lot of people just, you know, have you tried to uh, do it exactly like the real bamboo? That's not uh, uh, the literary painting is. They depend more of the, the calligraphy. So you can paint uh, most bamboo not, not really resembling the real one, but only a few identifiable is good. The, the more important is the crossing of uh, the lines okay, or the, the negative shape. The little, little, little space here, see those more important than indivi individual strokes. Okay. So let's just use up all the colors here and uh, add a little bit of color to this may help to soft the dryness. Okay, let's add water. Uh, sometimes you, on the tip, you only see two. It's like a Ren, or Chinese character for people, uh, instead of the, the three. You, know. and you, you do have a chance to kind of make up a little bit if, it, if you miss any, but just leave a break in, in between. You don't have to worry about um, a complete line, as long as the Qi connects, the, break, the movement continues. And see, I rehearse a lot. I do, you can re rehearse, kind of imagine. And then when you do it without hesitation, before you touch the paper, you can um, rehearse the movement. Sometimes it's not a rehearsal, it's just uh, um, attempt but you know, because I want to make it make sure it's barely touch the paper to keep it thin so I, I just try 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 until it reach the, the paper Usually we don't um, have to void the, you know, I just go straight cross through. Uh, it's a two-dimensional, uh, what do we call this, a cast shadow kind of thing. If, uh, the original, the origin of a bamboo, um, ink bamboo is uh, inspired by the cast shadow on the uh, rice paper window cover in the moonlight, like today, you probably see if, uh, because the moon is very bright, and you will cast a shade of, uh, of a bamboo onto the window, and then people just trace that. So that's basically a cast shade, a profile, or silhouette in French, right? Silhouette, uh, so it doesn't matter the 3D uh, overlapping, uh, you can just flatten it into two tones, when light, when dark, maybe. So that's the idea of a bamboo. It's a silhouette. 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 Thank you for correcting my <laughs> French. French. Su silhouette. 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 Yeah. Silhouette. Yeah. Silhouette. 
interesting. And today is a uh, full moon. Yeah, full moon night. Okay. And th oh, this is the uh, joint we call the knob knobs. Right. Uh, so you change a brush? Yeah, I use a smaller one. You can use the, the, uh, the this, if you dry it, uh, and make sure it's not bleed. I think it, oh, you, yeah. can, you can use a smaller one. The signature brush, the one you're going to use uh, for signing, it's good. Um, let me see. I think if we have room, I, I'll do a full moon, maybe. Are you trying to like sense where it's gonna be? Yeah, you can. You always um, use your fingertip and try to to draw the mental image, the ma mental image before you uh, actually do it. Um, that way, there's complete bamboo on the paper in your mind already, right? That's the. We have a we have a Chinese saying with complete bamboo in in, in mind, paint with complete right. bamboo in mind. So this this ink is kind of super dark in the job. Um, yeah, usually I don't have the because it's grinded, right? Okay. Yeah, it's a bit ink, like ink paste. Okay, another, um, usually a common, I, I won't say a uh, issue or a mistake, is people uh, tend to paint upward and downward bamboo on the same painting. Usually we don't, we don't do that, pic, pic, uh, picture-wise, picture-wise, because um, if you do that, uh, it would uh, create a conflict instead of harmony. So usually you go one direction. Yeah, the we 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 usually do uh, younger bamboo, mm. uh, and sometimes just like that it's fine. Mm. You know, we we can have a little bit like suggestion of upward, like like that is enough. But you don't do a full leaf going up. Maybe the most is like a horizontal. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. And let's see. Since we got color here, we just use a little bit of color maybe. That looks really good. Thank you. Uh, you usually we draw the circle for the moon. Um, and then I can just use a little bit of color to draw, I think, to match the color style, maybe just draw like an anzo, something like that, to suggest the moon. Instead of using the light ink, uh, if it's pure ink, you just use ink, right? Um, so that gives the light source the darkest on the, on the left side. It's not an accident, or I didn't plan it. But usually, you know, if, if everything is natural, you just have a, um, the, if, as if we have done that, on purpose, you know. So we just add a little bit. And that's it. A little shadow so it look like the moon is shining down there. And uh, we can write to happy uh, mid autumn or something like just for a, a greeting of the season. The festival in Asia today, right? It's a mid autumn festival in Chinese, or full moon festival here in English. Yes, and um, in Vietnam too. Oh, yeah. Yes. Did they eat mooncakes too? They do. They uh, 
Hey, look, look, he's happy. Okay, and uh, this is the sign, the signature goes with the title. You can put separate if you need, but you just put the, the year. That's the year of the rabbit, so they know which time exactly if they check later. And then the artist's name. And then I put this here. And then use, I could have used the pad. So this one goes directly under. Okay. Let me see. Yeah, that's good. So, um, let me just stop. It looks so good. It looks good here? Yes. Okay, thank you for monitoring this. Um, let me make a stop and we'll prepare for another one.